This episode has been brought to you by FlowState, the unlimited web flow development service. Find out more at flowstate.dev. Class names are dead, and here's why. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Webflow & Co, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. I've been thinking a lot recently about tools we use, the way we use them, what's best, what's the right tool for the right job. And this one might be a long one, so I'll leave timestamps below. One thing that keeps coming up time and time again for me is class names and naming conventions because I'm in the process of developing my own class naming convention to challenge things like Client First and, and Lumos. It started out by watching uh, one video by Theo. The Tailwind Marketing and Misinformation Engine. And I love Tailwind. I use Tailwind on all of our custom code projects that we build for our clients. And on the surface, this can get very disgusting and messy. The insane amount of classes you need on your HTML can just get unwieldy. And whilst I probably don't recommend it for like a basic static website, and I wouldn't recommend it for something like Webflow, however, Combined with the fact that we use Next.js, which is a component-based architecture, it starts to make more sense. And I spoke to um, Alicia and Timothy Ricks about this on LinkedIn. Class names or, or component-based class names, it's becoming very, very limiting. For example, if you have a testimonial component and it has a grid-like system in there, uh, like a three by three grid system for your testimonials. And then you want to reuse that similar style for something completely separate. Maybe it's blog posts. You've named those classes testimonial, testimonial grid, uh, testimonial site, whatever it is. It starts to not make sense. You want it to look the same in the, in the blog section, but you've named it testimonials and you have to rename that class name and all the rest of it. It starts to become messy and focusing in on application based class names makes more sense. Let's say three by three grid as the uh, basic example. I'm making all this stuff up on the spot, so hopefully you can uh, appreciate this. Going back to this idea of like application based class names, I've just recorded uh, an episode really digging into Framer and they eradicate the need for class names. They don't even entertain the idea of reusable classes. Every single thing needs to be styled and all the rest of it. That led me to think they're really pushing you to use components. You create components for everything, everything, a paragraph, a button, a, um, an image, a slider, which coincides with this idea of Tailwind and Next.js, which we use. All this to be said with component slots, I really think components are the future of all of web development, irrespective of its application and the websites that it's in is really the way to go. With that, I'm gonna bolt onto this episode, this idea of like class names, don't worry about them, or at least like limit them to the application they're being used for rather than the um, context. I think that makes sense. And create components around that so you're not having to worry about class names all the time. You're just worrying about components that you can edit and all the rest of it. And I think Timothy has done some great videos and I'll link them below. He'll do a much better job of explaining that than I can ever do. So taking this idea, I wanna bolt onto this episode the approach that I think we need to take when looking at a design. Now, I honestly haven't done this in a while, but it's just something I wanna, I've thought about and I wanna share with you. But I remember when I very first started building websites, right? I'm gonna take you back to the past. I would literally get the design, I would print it off on A4 piece of paper or A3 piece of paper. Obviously you can do it on Figma, you can on whatever, and I think the Figma file should in fact be a representation of this, but for argument's sake, just to just to nail the point home, print them all off and identify, literally with a marker, identify consistent or reusable elements that look the same. I didn't care what they were being used for. I would literally just look at the structure of that component and highlight that. And then I would create all of those components inside of using class names, because this was like 2010, something like this. I would then create all of those before actually creating the website. So I have my puzzle pieces, I have everything there for me to then apply the data or the, the context to. I haven't done that in a long, long time, but I do think that mentality or at least 
you know, if you don't get a Figma file that's laid out in a certain way that identifies all of the reusable components, then this is something we should mentally do. And then create all our components, just like we would with a style guide, we create everything. So then you're not worrying about any of the, the contextual applications of some of these components. You're literally just worrying about the form and the structure and the variations potentially of those components. Anyway, I do think class names are dead. I think they're a, a burden on the web development or web design process that really should be managed or can be managed on a um, much broader scope, i.e. components. It's an interesting take. It's still trying to form itself. So, you know, I respect your patience in this, but it's just an idea that I want to put out there, an idea that I'm going to be experimenting with. And I basically call for you guys' opinion. What do you think the pitfalls are or something like this? Because this is early thoughts for me, but I want to know your thoughts. I want to get you involved in some of this stuff. Watch Timothy's videos. I'll link Theo's video below as well, which kind of was triggering all of these thoughts. And I'll leave it at there. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, happy no coding.